quick change, shoes off, short pants on, all ready for launching. And then just carry the shore thing to the water's edge with the line between the contiki and the shore thing straight. The autopilot is already set and the timers on the shore thing and the contiki are both set to 15 minutes. So it's just a matter of starting the contiki motor and waiting for the peak of a large surge to set the gear on its way. We have an autopilot contiki here, so really that's the end of our job until it's time to haul it in. This is a whole lot different from a conventional contiki system. Right now, you'd be back at the winch, carefully clipping on traces while trying to avoid getting hooked, and putting on weights in the hope of anchoring the contiki against the rip after the motor switches off. If we didn't have the autopilot, our entire focus would be able to be given to the task of keeping the contiki on course and this is usually done by applying a bit of tension to the setting line opposite the desired direction of the set. After the big surge we launched on, we now have a lull and that's great. We're on the west coast today and typically there are offshore banks 300 to 600 metres offshore and this is where the full force of the waves is greatest. Usually, there's a bit of a calm spot of 100 to 200 metres wide on the inside of those offshore banks where the water is considerably deeper. From the beach to a couple of hundred metres offshore is usually a confusion of broken surf, surge currents and longshore rips. It can take a minute or so for the contiki to get through this nearshore area as it's like being in a washing machine on full power in that zone. It's not until you're in deeper less foamy water that the contiki gets better traction in the water and the gear really starts moving. From beach level the camera doesn't really show the true distances between the waves or the wave heights or demonstrate the distances between the different surf zones. To see that we're going to have to get the camera quite a bit higher and I think you'll be surprised by what you see. The surf today is 2 metres and we're about 6 minutes into the set and around 500 metres out as the contiki approaches the offshore bank. Note the wide flat calmer zone between the offshore and the inshore break. The breaking waves indicate water which is less than 1.5 metres deep. The water in the middle channel is probably well over 3 metres deep. As we have all our weight on the shore thing, None of this really matters to us, as our weights are on the surface. However, if you have a conventional contiki set up, it can be a big hurdle. You actually have to drag your weighted line up and over the bank, and your main line can slice into the bank, and that causes immense drag and can slow your conventional contiki. Well, that's another successful shore thing set nearly out. And remember, we have a 2 metre swell breaking out to 4 to 500 metres offshore today, and we have set with 4.5 pounds, that's a massive 2 kilograms of lead weight throughout the hook section. This amount of weight provides real holding power to anchor the gear against the rip once the contiki motor stops. A conventional contiki hook system would be really struggling to pull this much weight up and over the offshore bank. Yet the sure thing gets it out no sweat. We're now 9 or 10 minutes into the set and just clearing the outer bank. In 5 minutes or so the contiki will stop and deploy the baited hook section. The timer release for setting of the hook section can be set to activate before the contiki motor stops or after it stops. If the timer on the shore thing is set to activate after the contiki stops, the hook section will set as the contiki drifts. If you pull in 150 metres of mainline, this will speed the setting process and ensure that the gear is set straight out from you. The furthest out thing will be the big weights on the end of the hook section, then the baited hooks, then the leader section, then the contiki, and then the mainline all the way back to you. If you've set the sure thing timer to go off before the contiki, there's no problem there either. 
it will set under power just as well as it sets on the drift and it can handle setting speeds of up to 8 knots. You might think sharks aren't too much of an issue on the east coast but this footage shows this hammerhead on the east coast and it's right off Urititi Beach because we've completed most of our trials in areas where Kontiki fishing is popular. The week before when we didn't have the camera there was a Marco about the same size. Either of these sharks are fully capable of severing a conventional Kontiki hook section. So the last set of weights have deployed and now we're just watching the leader line unravel and the gear will be fishing. Well the gear's been out for about 10 minutes so we're hauling it in to see if there's anything out there. I'm flicking the line occasionally and giving it a wipe. That's to get sand and the bright green algae off the line so that it doesn't wind up smelling or abrading or the sand abrading the line. Keep an ear on the motor and uh, if you sort of feel that it's labouring a bit in the surf zone that could be an indication that the backwash is putting quite a bit of load on your catch and uh, it pays to nurse the fish through this inshore zone because many big fish are actually lost in this last bit pulling them in through the surf. Then we just walk down to the water's edge, pick up the Contiki and the shore thing and remember that the leader line and the hook section are still out at sea at the moment so they're still uh, 200 metres offshore. Drag your gear up above the surf zone so that you can just put it down and forget about it and then uh, it's time to pull the hooks in. I like to pull the hooks and the fish up out of the reach of the surf then quickly go through take the fish off uh, I like to look after the fish so normally I give them a bit of a wash and chuck them in the fish bin and then we're ready to start winding the gear back up. Well that wasn't too bad that was a 10 minute shot not bad fish, we'll have another go, maybe a bit further out I think. So that's it, we've pulled the con tiki and the shore thing up out of the surf. That's left the line running into the water with the hooks on it. We've pulled that in, taken the fish off, so now we're ready to take the reel out and repack it. So, just a simple pop out, pull the pin. I like to uh, keep all the stuff together so we can't lose anything. Just put the pin back in. The sure thing comes with a reel post. You'll need to fit the reel post to the winch or to a sand spike. The reel sits on top, it's got a ratchet underneath, the handle goes in, it'll only turn one way and that's the correct way to wind it. As you're winding try and ensure that you keep building up the line evenly over the centre core and that's especially important when you come to the weights. The key to success with the sure thing is to make sure that the traces are wound on correctly. They come around the reel the same way as the main line's gone, the hook section part has gone on. You look for a slot that when you put the hook in fully, it gives you an equal tension on the hook section 
and on the trace. And then once you wind it, that locks both in place very securely. There's no way that even the point of this hook can come out now, but you can flip it up to bait it and back down. So as long as you have all your hooks and traces laid correctly, this will deploy perfectly every time. Find that right slot, push her in, wind her up. With a little bit of practice you soon get to realise where you need to leave the knots to give you an easy uh, positioning of the trace. It's fairly easy to decide which is the correct trace. Just pull it around until you see one that's near where the eye is near the bottom of the slot. You can either go up or down. Uh, that one there is too loose. That one there is perfect.